Is it on? Okay, it's on. Fantastic. I'm gonna have a go for it. Alright, so from the start, I don't know if I can hear or not. Malcolm X, born Malcolm Little, was brought into a time of suffering and liberation efforts on May 19, 1925. His home place was Omaha, Nebraska, where his parents raised him until age 13. His father dwelled on teaching black pride and self-reliance. <laughs> when Malcolm was only 13, his father was dead and his mother was in a mental hospital. He began to be passed between foster homes, slipping into a world of crime. He was prosecuted to 8 to 10 years in prison thereafter and found a new organization that began a new road for him during his imprisonment. imprisonment. Joining the Nation of Islam, Malcolm became one of the nation's leaders and spokesmen. He became the public face of the Nation of Islam. But this would not last, for Malcolm would leave the organization in 1964 due to his tensions with Elijah Muhammad. After this departure from his previously started child position, Malcolm visited Mecca, an Islamic holy ground, on a pilgrimage and found... Ugh. God, I had to breathe. <laughs> and became a Sunni Muslim. He disavowed racism and began traveling while he founded the Muslim Mosque Incorporated, as well as the Secular Pan-African Organization and the Organization of Afri African American Unity. Less than a year after leaving Nation of Islam, three murders... Three members murdered him on February 21st, 1965 but not without leaving behind a legacy of his efforts. All right, that sucked. Sorry, I haven't read this over at all. Malcolm was born to Earl and Louise Little. His father was an outspoken Baptist lay speaker, as well as the leader of a local UNI league, standing for Universal Negro Improvement Association. Association. Yes. Association. Malcolm has said that the hands of white men, when having... Malcolm has said that... Ooh, that's messed up. Malcolm has said that the hands of white men, one having been lynched, killed three of his father's brothers. Malcolm's mother, Louise, was Scottish. Credit to this, her skin was light enough to have her almost pass for being white. This was at first a sign for Malcolm, although he later came to despise it. He has also said that he believes his, father fa his father's favoritism and mother's hatred is accredited to this fact. When Malcolm was still unborn, his mother received KKK threats. This would happen again in 1929, with the effect of their house being burnt down. The family now reacted by moving to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, and then later to Lansing, Michigan. Even later on, in 1931, on September 28th, Malcolm's father was hit and killed by a car. The police ruled it as an accident, but there was speculation over such rulings. Malcolm's father had two insurance policies but his family would only end up receiving payment from the smaller as the larger claimed suicide and would not compensate. Nine years later, in 1938, Malcolm's mother, Louise Little, suffered a mental breakdown. She was placed in an asylum and declared legally insane. Malcolm and his siblings were separated and placed in foster homes. Malcolm bounced from white family to family before moving in with his older half-sister in Boston in the February of 1941. Malcolm always did well in school, but dropped out in 8th grade when a racist white teacher responded to his dream of being a lawyer negatively. Malcolm was being raised in Roxburgh, Roxburgh a middle-class African-American neighborhood. He became enthralled with the society of this area, keeping on and off employment with the New Haven Railroad. He drifted from city to city between the years of 1943 to 1946. He then left Boston for Flint, Michigan after a short while and then settled in New York City in 1943. He lived in Harlem and became involved in drugs, gambling, racketeering, and steering prostitutes. His own prostitution is a debated topic written about only one biographer. In late, in late 1945, he, be he returned to Boston and began robbing wealthy white families. He was caught on January 12, 1946, when he dropped off a stolen watch for repairs at a jewelry store. He was sentenced to serve eight to 10 years in a prison for breaking and entering, as well as larceny. Larceny. <laughs> he began his sentence on February 27th at the Charlestown, Charlestown State Prison. His nickname here was Satan for his hostility towards religion. He began to become a supporter of self-education, enjoying reading greatly. His little brother wrote to him in 1948 about the Nation of Islam, telling him that it would help him get out of prison. It took him time to give in and bent his knees to this organiz organization's ideals, but he did. 
Later in his life, Malcolm would leave the nation of Islam and transform to the Sunni Muslim race. He would disavow his racism towards right, whites, but his more aggressive ideals would still transfer over. He would grow to become vital to the Islamic culture and became a big figure for speaking ideal, idealistic in both the Islam faces and the, in the overall picture of the civil rights acts and efforts. And then I have to show this little snazzy Animoto thing, which I can show you. I don't know if you want to, though. And then I have to read a speech, or something before the speech. So yeah, I would pause for the Animoto and then this. Um, a speech made famous by Malcolm X is the ballot or the bullet. This speech is pointing jaggedly at Malcolm's call for, se for separation. Why is that? Oh, it's too Sorry. Um, a speech made famous by Malcolm X is the ballot or the bullet. This speech is pointing jaggedly at Malcolm's call for separation from segregation. This speech was given in the time period between him leaving the nation of Islam and joining the true Islam faith. This speech was made so fantastic through Malcolm's already... Oh, that's a repeat of a word. Already amazing speech giving ways through his rumbling voice and the choice of words he used to explain the racist troubles and tribulations throughout the years. The entire message of the speech focuses on its title. Malcolm is focused on the new year of 1964 and how the black vote decides in most, much of the Democrats' success. He questioned the truthfulness of the Democrats and pointed out how a Dixiecrat was really much like a Democrat. He pointed out how he questioned, question, oh, that's annoying, how he questioned their sincerity. This made a blatant point. He was unsure of the black people's situation and was urging them to realize they had to take a stand. His views were made were more rough than the other leaders of the civil rights arguments, but in that same way they made a larger impact. And then I get to read that's from the speech. Ooh, excuse me. Um, so it's time in 1964 to wake up, and when you see them coming up with that kind of conspiracy, let them know your eyes are open, and let them know you, something else that's wide open too. It's got to be the ballot or the bullet. The ballot or the bullet. If you're afraid to use an expression like that, you should get at on out of the country. You should get back in the cotton patch. You should get back in the alley. They get all the Negro vote, and after they get it, the Negro gets nothing in return. All they did when they got to Washington was give a few big Negroes big jobs. Those big Negroes didn't need big jobs. They already had jobs. <sighs> that's camouflage. That's trickery. That's treachery. Window dressing. I'm not trying to knock out the Democrats for the Republicans. We'll get to them in a minute. But it is true. You put the Democrats first, and the Democrats put you last. And then to skip down a few paragraphs to the rest of the speech. Uncle Sam's hands are dripping with blood, dripping with the blood of the black man in this country. He's the earth's number one hypocrite. He has the audacity, yes. He has. Imagine him post posing as the leader of the free world. Free world. The free world. And you overhear singing, we shall overcome. Expand the civil rights struggle to the level of human rights. Take it to the United Nations, where our African brothers can throw their weight on our side. Where our Asian brothers can throw their weight on our side, where our Latin American brothers can throw their weight on our side, and where 800 million Chinamen are sitting there waiting to throw their weight on our side. Let the world know how bloody his hands are. Let the world know the hypocrisy that's practiced over here. Let it be the ballot or the bullet. Let him know that it must be the ballot or the bullet. Woo! All right, so, that, oh wait, there's a little bit more. <laughs> All right. Malcolm X made a very heavy, heavy impact on the world. There would have been many differences in the acts of civil righteousness should the speaker have not surfaced. Respect as well as fear is in depth. For as many inspirational words, for each amazing point muttered, there's an unexplainable fear behind Malcolm X. Before his transformation to the true Islamic faith versus that of the grading views of the nation of Islam, he held a ferocity and hatred for the white men that was unmatched. In the same way that, in the same way that he was to be respected, hatred fueled many of his, of his ideals. I'm gonna have like another sentence because that kind of goes off really badly. And why does he keep doing that? Uh, all right, that's it. Thank you.